Because PFAS include about 5,100 different chemicals, what we know about the effects of these chemicals on human health is limited to a fairly small number. We know a lot about one particular PFAS known as PFOA. Quite a suite of health effects have been associated with not only PFOA, but some of the other PFAS. The challenge with these compounds is because of their properties of being persistent and being you know, water resistant, they're very long-lived compounds in the environment. They've been found in air, they've been found in soil, sediment, water. And I think what's alarming to people is, is the issue of why these compounds are still in the environment, why they're still being used, why are we still getting exposed to them. The PFAS issue has really raised an alarm about the most basic question, and that is, can we drink our water? Anytime something this threatening uh, erupts and information is lacking, it really sparks a lot of fear because we just don't know. And so I think the community has had a huge effect. There are true grassroots organizations that have popped up asking all the right questions and pressuring elected officials to find out the answers and do the right thing by this community. So the PFAS Testing Network is a group of scientists from many different universities across the state, and we've been charged to help produce information about the extent of PFAS contamination, where it's coming from, where it's going, what it does to our health. We're really fortunate to have some of the nation's leading PFAS researchers at these universities, and so we've been able to assemble a very strong team of researchers to address this question. One of the great things about the PFAS testing network is that it brings together all these different ideas and all these different approaches so that we can better understand PFAS contamination across the state. It's a really amazing way to bring together faculty with different expertise to solve a problem.